Good morning, class. Good morning, teacher. What a wonderful day to learn about the word of the Lord, is it not? Yes. Today we have a very special title, and our title today is Remove Not Thy Ancient Landmarks. This title is very dear to my heart, as I know it will be for some of you. Now, before we start, what do you understand by this title? Sister Tomisin. To me, it means salvation, and to continue to preach salvation as long as our church stands. It also means teaching sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, divine healing, restitution, and most importantly, the Holy Bible as it is, not prosperity gospel and other meaningless things. And that should not change. Amen. Amen. Sister Janet. Especially holiness, which is the center of Christianity, and that should not change. Amen. Amen. As Debbie. for me, it means following the right steps to salvation, which means praying through the spirit bearing witness that you're saved and not raising your hands to win salvation, and that should not change. Amen. Sister Dorcas. It also means boldly preaching that sinners go to hell if they do not repent. In other words, making sinners not comfortable in their sins, and that should not change. Yeah. Brother Timmy. In our church, we back all our preachers with a strong Amen. Amen. And that should not change. Amen. Sister Naomi. Our music draws people to prayer. We sing songs about the cross and the blood of Jesus. It has meaning, and that should not change. Amen. To me, it means the church still makes you for the altar bench and cry out for the Christian experiences. A church where prayers are focused. Also, midweek services is our priority for Christian maturity and growth. We are not Sunday, Sunday Christians and God is first in all things and that should not change. Amen. Amen. Sister Divine. Pastor, as Christians, we dress modestly to the glory of God, not to follow the latest fashion. Our outward appearance matches our inward condition. We are different from the world. We do not believe when in Rome we do as the Romans do. And that should never change. That is very interesting. Now let us see what the Bible has to say in the form of a few memory verses. Even the word of God says, John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Also, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or thus he will hold to one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. Amen. I know it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou sh shalt observe to do according to all that is written. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So Joshua, Joshua 1 verse 8. If ye loves me, keep my commandments.
Yes, that is what we are all about. This is our church. This is Apostolic Faith Mission. This is our camp meeting. God so help us, he will check our hearts. He will grant us all of our Christian experiences. And he will not remove those ancient landmarks. God bless you all. Good morning, 
you are welcome to 2017 Apostolic Faith Mission, Western Europe, Camp Meeting Convention. May the Lord bless each and every one of you for coming. Amen. Something that we've been looking forward to and we are very happy that the Lord has made it possible for each and every one of you to be here with us. A similar warm welcome is extended to our internet audience. Wherever you are located, the same God of heaven who was here before we all got here, we know. We are praying we be with you as well wherever you are. We have all our services throughout this week. We are not going to be having our webcast as we normally do from our church in London. Everything throughout this week will be from this location, especially for our internet audience. We will hear more about that when we get into the announcement proper. But for now, we want to appreciate the orchestra that have given us the Church One's Foundation. Now they are going to do Pump and Circumstance, which will be followed with a combined choir. I will call upon him and then a quartet. Help me, Lord. May the Lord bless you all.
tend to sing together. We are going to take our first song from CGS number 98. CGS number 98 will be our first song. Actually, we're going to have just two songs. This first one from CGS 98, we are going to take verses 1, 2, 5, and 6, sitting down. Verses 1, 2, 5, and 6, sitting down. And then we are going to have another one that will be projected ancient word. We're going to stand up to sing that at the end of which Brother Mark from the hour will come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. The first one, CJS 98, four verses, one, two, five, and six. Then we stand up to sing the one that will be projected, not in our hymn book, ancient word. And then when we finish that, Brother Mark will come forward to lead us in congregational songs. You're welcome once again to our camp meeting. It is my usual announcement that before each and every one of us got here, the Lord knew you were coming, and he was here before you got here. God is here for one express purpose, and that is to bless you and bless me. It is the prayer of my heart that we are not going to miss that blessing. Amen. Our children this morning told us that it is part of the um, gospel landmarks, ancient landmarks, that we say amen. amen. I enjoy your amen, Sister Eunice. God bless you. Amen. And I want everybody to take that on board. It is a good thing. Our children have reminded us that when we listen to something that we should say amen to, let us say amen. Amen, amen simply means so let it be. Yes. So when they are quoted, when they were giving us them, um, help me, O oh Lord, if you are following that, and I'm not saying we should shout, perhaps some of you will say, I'm saying amen in my heart, and God bless you for doing so. Amen. There's nothing wrong in saying it out as well. You wake someone up who may even be um, somewhere else. Okay, so we are going to take those two songs, and Sister Emma is our song leader. ourselves without the instrument. That was beautiful. Uh, we want to now sing ancient word. The last verse of it will stand up to sing. After that will be led in prayer.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for bringing us around here to hear your word. And we pray that as we've come, Lord, you open our hearts to receive it. We thank you, Lord, for you're a great God. We surrender this service into your hands. And pray that, Lord, you speak to each and every one of us. Pray for the minister that will preach the word, that your anointing be upon them. Pray for every song that will be sung in this service, that, Lord, your anointing be upon it. Lord, when we come around these altars to pray, we pray that you meet each and every one of us. We want to receive from thee blessings of salvation, blessings of sanctification, blessings of Holy Ghost and fire baptism. And we pray that you do it so even more to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once more, on behalf of um, AFM Western Europe, I'd like to welcome all of you to our 2017 Cameroon Convention here in Mid Wales. May the Lord who has brought you and I here for a purpose achieve that purpose in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And for all our internet audience, wherever you are, we pray that the Lord will bless you as well. Amen. We are all going to be here for one week of feasting at the Lord's table. For those of us that are here, we want to encourage you to grab one of these if you have not yet. There you will see all the items of the meetings that we have in place. As you possibly might have noticed, um, at the end of this devotional service, we have lunch between one and two. Um, the lunch here is time conscious, so they would like everybody to be on time. Of course, if you want to pray, you are welcome to pray, but perhaps you cannot have the two together. You get the blessing on your knees and perhaps you miss the lunch, and that is fine. Um, so please, if you feel like you want to have lunch, be sure that you uh, stick uh, to that time. Then we have the youth choir and orchestra um, practice for 2.15 in preparation for their service, young people's service at 3.30. And then, of course, we have dinner and then the adult choir and orchestra um, practice at this main hall at 7 before the evening service. Um, tonight, which is going to be at um, 8 p.m. This is, of course, a different schedule altogether for today being Sunday. From tomorrow, the schedule uh, will change, and of course, you will have possibly seen this in the program that has been given out to you. I want to encourage you that you please try as much as possible to follow through with that. From the welcome message or the um, announcement, that um, were given out yesterday, one item has to do with parents to please help look after your children. Um, there is no crutch in place for anybody to put your children with anybody. But of course, if you need help, let others know that you need help and help will be available for you, but there is no organized crutch for anyone. Um, as far as that goes. So please make sure that you have your children with you um, at all times. Well, we are not the only one here. Actually, as we are here now, we have many people praying for us. They are looking this way, praying that the Lord will be with us. And some have even put down their greetings, which um, we would like to share together. And then we know um, where we have people um, praying for us, and even those that cannot send in their greetings. I start with the first one from our superintendent general who is arriving here tomorrow with um, his wife, Sister Debbie. Um, when, before I left Portland, he sent this to me. On behalf of the Portland Church and the Apostolic Faith Work Worldwide, Debbie and I extend greetings to you who have assembled at this committee. Our prayer is that God will rain down the blessing upon all of you. Amen. We 
pray for sinners to be saved. Amen. We pray for the saved to experience entire sanctification. Amen. We pray for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as our God shall call. Acts 2.39. We also pray for the sick to be healed, Amen. every saint to be encouraged. Amen. The saints at headquarters and across America are praying for you. May God bless each of you. Amen. That's from Brother Daryl. We have this from Brother James and Sister Martel Olale. As you commence another feast, may the power of God come down mightily Amen. to save, to sanctify, and to baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. May God heal all the sick Amen. and bring back all the backsliders. Amen. Enjoy your camp in peace. Amen. We have this from Brother and Sister Debo Joe from Weka. As you begin your 2017 camp meeting today, we pray that the host of heaven will join you to make the camp meeting a huge success. Amen. The good Lord will shower his blessings upon all the campers and the blessings will overflow unto us in other parts of the world. Amen. May God sprinkle the great and powerful blood of Jesus Christ upon the campus and all the surroundings of the camp. Amen. As you deliberate on remove not the ancient landmark, may God help us not to remove the landmarks as set by our forefathers. Amen. During this week convention, may God save many souls, Amen. sanctify many, baptize with Holy Ghost and fire, Amen. heal the sick, Reanoint the reanoint and solve all problems Amen. brought to the camp in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Above all, as Jesus is coming soon, may God help all of us to be ready for the rapture in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Happy camp meeting. We have this from Brother Daniel Nkita and family from Norway. As the saints gather for the 2017 camp meeting in Wales, we are sure the good Lord will attend every meeting with blessings of salvation, Amen. sanctification, Amen. baptism of the Holy Spirit, Amen. healing and re-anointing. We have prayed and still pray for the success of the camp meeting. May the blessings flood the UK Amen. and cut across the globe. Amen. Happy camp meeting. Amen. From Brother Yayabobo and family who unfortunately they've paid for their flight, paid for their visa, but they were denied and they lost all that amount of money spent for paying for the family of five or so, as well as everything that they paid towards their visa, they sent in this greeting. God, we pour down blessings on everyone. Amen. We tried to be there this year, but it wasn't possible. By God's grace, we will be there next year. Amen. Greetings to all saints of God. That is from Brother Yaya Bobo and family in Spain. From... Um, Michelle and Diony Madu Jutimi, Paris, France. We thank God for another time of spiritual rejuvenation. We pray that the will, there will be an overflowing of diverse blessings Amen. on all delegates and internet viewers, and that God's presence will be felt in all the meetings. Happy camp meeting. Amen. And we have from Brother Bayo Adeniron, on behalf of the board and all the saints from Waker, we rejoice with you as you gather to fellowship with the Lord and each other at this year's UK camp in Wales. May the good Lord make all delegates rapture ready. Amen. With his atoning blood, we pray he flows your heart and lives with the choicest blessings of heaven. Amen. We shall continue to join our prayers with yours that the presence and power of God be with you throughout the entire camp period and after. Happy camp meeting. Dele Femi and the family also from Spain who were not denied but were, we believe, granted their visa very late and they're supposed to arrive in London uh, on Friday in order to join the um, entourage from London yesterday but couldn't and we are still expecting that before the end of the camp meeting the Lord will make it possible for them to join. They send in their greetings too. Even though we are not there physically, but we are all with you in spirit. May spirit, mercy, and divine protection sufficient for you all. Amen. From 
Brother Remy Oye on behalf of our church at Tua in France. The church in Tua is praying for you that God who worked at Portland will work twice at your meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And then from Sister Mary and Joseph Shitu from Lagos, Nigeria, as you are starting this year, camp meeting, may the great God of heaven shower his blessings on you all. Yeah. May everyone present feel the great touch of the master's hand. Yeah. Happy camp meeting. Yeah. I think from all of this, we can see that people of God are praying for us. They are all looking this way, that the Lord will give us something special. And we know that the Lord is going to answer all their prayers in our behalf in Jesus' name. Yeah. Okay, we will continue with the devotional service. Um, we now listen to the um, first um, special, I've set my feet, at the end of which we are going to have the Bible reading, which is taken from the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, reading from verse 3 through to 13, which will be taken by one of our visiting overseers from Nigeria, Brother Madoju Timi, will read that to us. And at the end of that, we have the last special upon this rock, which is solo and choir, and then the word of God. God bless you all. Scripture reading 
is taken from Leviticus chapter 26, reading verses 3 through to 13. If ye walk in my statutes, and keep my commandments, and do them, for then I will give you rain in due season, Amen. and the land shall yield an increase, Amen. and the trees of the fruit shall yield their fruit. Amen. Five. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, Amen. and you shall eat your bread to the full. And dwell in your land safely. Says, and I will give peace in the land, Amen. and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. Amen. And I will rip evil beasts out of the land, Amen. neither shall the sword go through your land. Amen. Seven. And you shall chase your enemies, Amen. and they shall fall before you Amen. by the sword. Amen. Eight. And five of you shall chase an hundred, Amen. and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flesh, Amen. and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Amen. Nine. For I will have respect unto you, Amen. and make you fruitful Amen. and they multiply you Amen. and establish my covenant with you. Amen. 10. And you shall eat old store Amen. and bring forth the whole because of the new. Amen. 11. And I will say my tabernacle among you Amen. and my soul shall not abhor you. Amen. 12. And I will walk among you and we be your God, Amen. and ye shall be my people. Amen. 13. I am the Lord your God, Amen. which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, Amen. that ye should not be their bondsmen, Amen. and I have broken the bonds of your yoke, Amen. and make you go upright. Amen. Thank you. 
and you could win if you will give your life away for nothing in return. Then you are where my kingdom will begin upon this road. take our text from the caption of this camp meeting, which is from the book of Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, reading verse 28. Proverbs 22, verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set. This was a command that God had given well before this time. The writer of the book of Proverbs was just here reminding the people in his days about what the Lord had said earlier on in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19, verse 14, that was where God said that thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess. God gave that instructions. God wanted them to have boundaries. God wanted them to have demarcations. God wanted them to know their right of extension if you like, and other actions that they may like to take. But more importantly, we want to apply this to our spiritual inheritance, the land that God has for us. We want to have them definitely established. We don't want to debate them. We don't want to negotiate. We don't want to compromise. And they are not for sale either. There are some um, land inheritance that you inherited and then you just decide you want to sell. Even I've heard stories of um, some landed properties that were given to some people. You are not ready to sell. It can be even stolen from you. And in many places you have nothing to do. There's just no law to protect you. But when we talk about gospel landmarks, they cannot be stolen. And we are not ready to trade them for anything. May the Lord bless our children. Amen. May the Lord make them to be grounded. Amen. As I was listening to that program of the children this morning, sharing with some people around me, I said, we can as well just go and pray. It's like as if they have looked at my sermon notes. 
Everything I put down on my sermon notes is what the children have preached to us. So we all know what we meant by these gospel landmarks. So it is not a question of knowledge now. It's going to be a question of doing. And may the Lord help you and I to be doers of that which we know. We don't just want to be hearers only. We want to praise God for what the Lord has done for us. Leaving home this morning, um, Stella decided to give me something that she has never given me before. It is a blueberry oat. I've never had that before. I know about oat. Actually, we just come from Portland. I love to go for my breakfast every morning. And part of my regular um, breakfast is to have oatmeal, which we know is creamy. And don't ask me more than that in terms of the color or what it looks like. I just know that it tastes nice. And this morning, Stella asked me, I'm making you something blueberry oat, whatever that is. And then when that was brought to me, um, I didn't even know that I was eating oats. It has changed color. The taste has changed. And I was wondering, where is this coming from? And as I was eating that thing and enjoying it, it came to my mind that there are many things we can decide to change the way we like. We can turn it to whatever we like. But you know the gospel landmarks? It's not something we can just change. I don't know whether we have another thing to tell you tomorrow, whether it's going to be mulberry or strawberry or whichever berry oat that I'm going to get, if there is going to be anything like that. And she can decide to do that with what she wants to give me, just as you and I can decide to do anything with whatever we want to do. But when it comes to the gospel landmarks that has been set before you and I ever came into existence, we don't have the qualification. We don't have the audacity to say that we want to amend that. We want to stand on it. We want to practice it. We want to do it. We want to follow it. And praise God, power is available. Because Jesus Christ changes not. Anything can change. Many things can change. But when it comes to the gospel, it does not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are admonished that we must not add to it. We must not take out of it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 17, says that, Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. And all the people shall say, Amen. 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 It was so serious that that is part of what God gave them that you must not remove that which has been said. And the writer of the book of Revelation put it more succinctly in the last chapter of the book of the Bible, chapter 22, reading to summarize verses 18 and 19, if any man shall add unto these things, referring to the landmarks of the gospel, the prophecy, the message of this book of the Bible, which we refer to today as our landmarks, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from it, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from things which are written in this book. May that not be our lot in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody told me, and I think it's more applicable. You know, I, I come from a culture where some names are cherished. I came from a big Gundes family. It's a big family in Oyo State, Ibadan, Nigeria. That name is not my name. I met that name. And we are so careful. We are taught, we are told, we are admonished. Be careful of what you do with that name. Because whatever you do with that name, remember it is not your name. You don't want to spoil it. You don't want to destroy it. The, the preservation of names and the culture I came from is so important. To the extent that even if you want to do anything, if you don't even think of any repercussion at all, you think of the name. By application. You know this word Christians that you and I call ourselves, 
remember, it did not originate from you. And we don't want to spoil it. The word Christians came from those that uh, knew what it meant to be a Christian. Those that have met Christ. Those that have worked with Christ. Those that have experienced Christ. So be careful what you do with that name. Be careful with what we do with whatever is associated with that name. God is the one that set all these landmarks in place. They are right. They are old, of course, but they are the only way to heaven. Put together, there is no other way to heaven other than that. During the Portland Camp meeting, the Superintendent General, Brother Darrell Lee, while admonishing the ministers and the spouse, said something like this. We don't introduce any new thing to what has been proved to work effectively for over 110 years. What do you want to add to that? And if you want the evidence of that, I brought some for you. I have this. This was the Diamond Jubilee of the Apostolic Faith Church, 1906 to 1981. I will encourage you. We brought a lot. So you are entitled to a copy of this. They are ready for you at the end of this service. I will encourage you. Take time to read testimonies of victories. For 75 years, up to that 1981, of what the Lord has been doing since the beginning of this work in terms of the landmarks that have been set for us that we are following, read testimonies of reality, what happened to people, what people experienced. When you finish with that, I have some of you have got this already. We brought some also for you in case you have not. This was carried on to 100 years. And we have all these too. We are part of something great. Amen. We are part of something that works. We, we are not just existing. This gospel landmark, and that is why some people are ready to die for it. That is why some people are ready not to compromise it. That is why some people, they don't care what others do. They stand firm to do that which is right because we have evidence that it works. We have the evidence that some people that have uh, taken that road of those landmarks and practiced it and believed it and followed it, they have made heaven. Yeah. They are in heaven now, and there is no other way other than that same old way. Gospel landmarks. It, will, it worked for them, it's going to work for us. The children yeah. told us that the old time religion, it will take us to heaven, yeah. not the new time religion. There are many things that are changing these days. And perhaps there is nothing wrong in many things changing. I want to even believe that God in his own economy has even made certain things to be changing. So that we can enjoy life. So that we can enjoy more facilities and many other things. But when it comes to this word of God, they are established for life. Culture doesn't change it. Environment doesn't affect it. Innovation has no impact. It was the same thing. It is the same thing. And this word will remain the same thing. And by the grace of God, we are going to stand on that. These posts, as our children told us this morning, that have been established, we want to preserve them. They are our property lines. You can just imagine when you have those four posts, uh, uh, where you have the four pillars, that's what I know, um, from my experience of having a plot of land, you put in, in those uh, corners, one, two, three, four. And if you draw the line, that is my land. Nobody can just jump in and do whatever you like. Neither can I jump out of mine into yours. We want to have the land of the gospel that has been preserved and handed over to us. We want to have them demarcated. We want to remain in them. And we don't want anybody to encroach. We don't want anybody to come and cut something off or cut something there or add anything to it. That property line, we want to continue in them. 
We don't want to move them. We don't want to do anything with it. We just want to accept it and follow it through. The book of Colossians, uh, Paul admonishing the uh, Christian in Colossus say that um, in verse, chapter 1, verse 23, and chapter 2, 7 and 8, advising them about to continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have taught, as you have been taught, abandoned therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. We want to be settled. You know, when you don't know your property line, you have nothing to defend yourself. But if you know your property line, people can just not do anything they like. So also with this gospel, we want to know what we stand for. When we don't know what we stand for, we will hear so many things, and before you know it, you may get confused. And there is no need to be confused, because the gospel is simple for the simple hearted. We don't want to make it complicated at all. What are these landmarks? We have born again experience. It is only by being born again that we can have power over sin. Willpower cannot do it. Self-determination cannot do it. The old-time power, the old-time faith, the old-time way of being redeemed from life of sin is still through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And it is the same thing today. Yes, Any other way we fail, we so ever. We want to go through that same old way. We don't want to compromise it. Let no one deceive you. There's no other way. It has to be the way of repentance. It has to be the way of surrendering to God. It has to be the way of God, I am sorry. I have blown it. You are right, I am wrong. Have mercy upon my soul. And when we do like that, God will answer our prayers. Amen. If, of course, we mean it from the bottom of our heart, then we have that of holiness. The Bible says that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Jesus Christ even himself prayed for his disciples that God will sanctify them. Sanctification is a landmark. We don't want to do anything with it other than just to pray for it and make sure that we receive it. We don't want to change it. The, I, I read in uh, our gospel landmark uh, uh, um, tract that we can afford to believe the word of God in the face of the changes that are going on in the world today. You and I can afford that. God can equip you and I to determine that we want to live a life of holiness, come what may, and the Lord is going to help us to do that. Amen. Many people, of course, want a way that is appealing to the carnality of their heart and the one of the, the appealing to the depravity of man. Uh, that will not take anyone anywhere. That, that will not work for anyone. We want to be sure that we stand for that way. If it, is, if it is difficult for you, ask God to give you the grace. We can be holy. We can live holy life. God can help us to do so. People have done it. They have made heaven. You and I can as well do the same. We can be sanctified holy. Some have said, away with the old time religion of our fathers. And they have been advocating to take up something that is more scholarly, something that is more cultured, something more refined, something more educational, something newer, and something logical. It doesn't work. It does not work. Just follow what the Bible says. Just do the way the Bible prescribes it, and you will see the blessing that we follow. Well. I was uh, around, as many of you perhaps may be around in 2006, when this took place in Portland. And something that caught my attention from all the display during this special time, something caught my attention in many things that were displayed, that I've always been quoting for myself, and I still have it here for you. It says that we now have new method of distributing the old truth. New method of propagating the old truth. So the truth remains the same. 
We can do many other things of transferring that. We can do many other things of preaching that, of presenting that, but we are still presenting the same thing. And that is where we want to stand. The truth that cannot change. Um, if we want to, it is true, we are not saying that we should go back 50 years and be using horse-drawn coaches when there is now supersonic uh, uh, aircraft that within a few hours just take you to where you want to get to. And then now you want to say, I want to be an old-timer. So it has to be us drunk coaches that they were doing many, many years ago. People will laugh at you. I think the point I'm making here is to let you get me. We are not saying that we go back and be doing things that God in his own economy has planned that things should move on. Things should move ahead. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Bible. <clears throat> I'm talking about the landmarks that have been set for you and I that if we follow that the Lord is going to help us. Thank God for those changes, and for that of old-time religion, it works for me. Amen. For these, about 43 years, it works for me. Amen. And it is still working for me. Amen. That is why I can shout it out to young people, because I got saved when I was a teenager. I may not have the challenges that young people have now, but I had mine. People that grew up during my time, they had theirs. It's all different ones. But God of our fathers, Amen. that kept us through those years, Amen. he will keep our young people. Amen. He will keep all of us. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. it has worked for me. And I have no regret. No regret one day. Not because of being a pastor. Not at all. If I were to sit down there, I would say the same thing. And I say, I have no regret at all. Since December 1, 1974, on a Sunday afternoon like this, when I decided to go down on my knees to confess my sins to God and ask God to forgive me, and heaven came down and God forgave me, no regret whatsoever. Gospel works. The old time faith works. The old time religion works. You remember the last commission Jesus gave before his ascension? Ye shall receive power. Do you want power? Yes. God can give you power. Yes. You want to be effective for the Lord? You want to do what the Lord has made you to do? What he has called you to be? You need the power of God. It's a landmark that we don't want to uh, tamper with at all. Uh, God himself, Jesus himself told us that we can tarry after we have been sanctified and pray for Holy Ghost baptism and he will give it to us. Yeah. We are not talking of when you receive it, you start speaking gibberish. We are talking of receiving power from Jesus. Amen. I'm not talking of the one that you are touching and you are falling down. I'm not talking of the one that until somebody lay hands on you. Yes, occasionally in the Bible that happened and God orchestrated that. And many, countless number of people have received Holy Ghost baptism without anybody laying hands on them. God wants you and I to dig deeper. That is when we get our baptism. When we consecrate. When we tell God that everything is not for you. Empty me. Take out everything. Nothing of my own again. Thy perfect will be done in my life. Search me, O oh Lord. Do your will in my life. Fill me with your power. Have mercy upon my soul. I want to be effective for you. We're talking of serious prayer. When we do that, heaven will come down. The speaking of tongues is just the evidence. When you pray for your Holy Ghost baptism, don't look for that evidence. Look for Holy Ghost baptism. Tell God, I want you to baptize me. No, make me speak. Make, speak what now? Amen. We want to get it the old time way. Yes. yes, there are many new ways of doing it. We don't want to follow that. No. That doesn't work for anybody. But the one that we seek on our, on our knees and we tarry, the one that we can obtain, God will give it to us. Amen. All these experiences, we want to obtain them 
And when God has given them to us, we want them nailed down. Yeah. You get my point? Nailed down. Yeah. Nailed down into our heart. Yeah. So that when people are saying whatever they are saying, doing whatever they are doing, I know what I have. I know my property line. I know what the Lord has done for me. All this one that you are saying, Reverend Carver, Brother Carver, one of our previous overseers, said when God gave him his experience, and then he got back to where he was working, and people were trying to find out, asking questions and many questions, he said, I don't know what to tell them, but I, can, I know what I got. Let people know I know what I have. This one that you are saying, that is your own, but what the Lord has done for me, I know what it is. This is our expectation in this camp meeting. Amen. That many will be saved. Amen. Genuinely. Amen. In the old time method. Amen. Many will be sanctified. Amen. In the old time way. Amen. Many will be sanctified. Amen. In the old time way. Amen. When God give it to us in the old time way, God will help us to keep it just as our old timers kept it. When you talk about restitution, some people will tell you, but that is past. How about the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 15, that says that God requires that which is past. We don't want to change that. We don't want to adjust that. We don't want to modify that. Jesus will help you if you try. Yeah. I love that song very much. Jesus will help you if you try. Yeah. Lord, I know I have wronged my brother. I have wronged my sister. I have said what I shouldn't have said. I have taken what I shouldn't have taken. I, I have done this and the Spirit of God is pinning it down on your heart. Go forward. Pray about it and go forward. And go and make your way right. That's part of our landmark. We don't want to change that. Christian forgiveness. We want to stop talking about it. We want to do it. We're part of the teaching that we heard in Portland has to do with when you free the offender, you free yourself. Do you know that? When you refuse to free the offender, you are, in, you are in prison. I don't want to be in prison. I don't want to, for, I, I must forgive. I want to forgive so that me, myself, I will be free. That is landmark. Gospel landmark. Christian forgiveness. Where there was a time the disciples were finding this hard somehow. And they were trying to say perhaps seven times. Jesus said, I didn't tell you that. I said 70 times 7. 490 times. Which record are you keeping? Where are you writing it? The first one, then the 10th, then the 50th, then the 100th, then the 200th, then the 290, and then the 350. How about if Jesus comes during that time? And you are saying, well, Jesus said 490. I just want to keep it up to 490. And when it gets to 491, may God help us. Yeah. Bible has a way by which, you know, Jesus is, is, is a master planner. Yeah. He knows that we are going to offend each other. I will offend you. You will offend me. God in his own economy knows that the enemy of you and I is still in this world. His name is Satan. He will cause misunderstanding. He will cause issues. And no wonder, old time fashion, old time way, Jesus said it there in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 18, what we should do. Some people like to change that. When someone has done something to you, instead for you to go to the person, you like telling your friends. You may even want to tell your spouse. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, go to him alone. That's the first step. But many people like to change that. When people speak to me about things like that, many times I will say, what does the Bible say? The Bible really wants you and your brother to say to, and nobody to know about it. That is wonderful. Before anyone can know about it, it is because, well, there is an issue now that is not resolved, and then the next step, and then the next step, and then the next step, before it even gets to the pastor. Stop running to the pastor. I tell people, by the grace of God, I'm a pastor, as we have many other pastors. I am not in heaven already. I want to get to heaven too. So don't bring cases that you have not even confronted yourself. You've not done anything about it. Why talking to 
to me about it. We have the Bible way to follow. That is the gospel way. That is the right way. Don't let us change that. Don't let us do that which is logical. God's way many times is not logical to man. God is the embodiment of wisdom. Always logical. But because of the little, this little thing that God has given you and I, we'll be thinking, but that's not logical. That is not right. Who are you? Let's follow the Bible. Consecration, the way of the cross. Some people will tell you they don't want to suffer. The way of the cross leads home. It's the old time religion. God knows what you will go through. So when it comes, you better start praying, God, deliver me. God, help me. God, stand by me. But to say that um, this must not come or start attaching that now to your spouse, some people will think it's their spouse causing them the problem. They start giving them names. Some people will think it is their parents. Uh, some people will think it's their uh, uh, one ancestor or one thing or the other. If you have problem in your life as a child of God, take it to the Lord. Yeah. Whatever the Lord has permitted to come your way and has come your way, go and tell God about it. For God's children, God knew before the thing got to you anyway. And you never know what the Lord will bring out of that. So take that up. Consecration is a way that we must go through a way of not what I want to do, but what God wants me to do. It's a way of suffering. Many times, God may cause that to happen. It's a way of surrender. It's a way of sacrifice. It's a way of submission, just like Abraham did. We, it's not logical. Is it logical when Abraham will go and tell somebody, oh, he didn't tell anybody anyway, according to the scriptures, but then if he, you go and tell somebody, um, God told me to take the only son that I've waited for, for about 25 years. Imagine that. To go and sacrifice. What is the logic in that? But that's what God has said. When God says yours to you, when he says mine to me, may God help you and I to agree. Yeah. And take the right step. Instead of looking for somebody, oh, do you think this is right? You know what God is telling you. Consecration. Honoring God. The Lord's day. Church attendance and fellowship. Some people will say, I don't need fellowship or instruction. We need each other. It's a gospel landmark. The word of God says that we need to provoke each other unto love and unto good works. That simply means that when we meet together, I learn from you, you learn from me. I learn from you, you learn from me. That's the way the Bible has put it down. That you want to know, no, no, fellowship is not important. Going to church is not important. Or if I can just even watch it on the internet at home, I'm not going to, it's not a, an important thing. The gospel landmark, according to the word of God, is that we should not forsake the assembling of each other. Some people are desecrating the lost day today. And they have so many excuses for doing so. Okay. The old time religion is still the old time religion. The requirement of God concerning the Lord's Day is still the same. It does not change. There is nothing happening today that you say it was because it wasn't happening then. So are we now trying to say that God at that time didn't know what would be happening today? Our God knows the end from the beginning. He knows we will be in this situation. He knows what this world will be uh, 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 will be in tomorrow. And his word caters for everything. Amen. We don't want to adjust the Bible to suit us. We want to take ourselves, adjust ourselves, align ourselves with the word of God. Yes. That is what we should do. Yes. Don't take the Bible and say, well, then you give it another interpretation that is good for you. You are just deceiving yourself. We want to honor God. We want to honor the Lord's day. We want to do what the Lord wants us to do. Divine healing. You know, there is not one of God's commandments that we cannot obey with joy and with gladness. God still heals divinely. He heals in the hospital. He heals at home. He heals wherever. We just need to put our trust in him. Wherever we are, my trust is in the Lord. Lord, you are my healer. Your word, I say that by your stripes, I am healed. 
irrespective of what you are going through, irrespective of what um, uh, uh, um, um, people may be doing to you or doing to help you, don't put your trust in them. Let your trust be in the Lord, and the Lord will deliver you. We want to trust God, not man. And we don't want to remove that. We want to follow his instruction. If you are sick, what are we enjoying to do? Call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint you. Pray over you in faith. You have faith as you go there. Just have the faith. God, I'm obeying your word. It's not this oil. I explained to people it's just extra virgin olive oil. We, the people of God, have consecrated and then they are not, nothing in that oil. We are only obeying the instruction of God. And when we are anointed and we are prayed over, we shall be healed. Amen. In this come meeting. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Many you will be healed. All shall be healed. I shall be healed. You shall be healed. It's a landmark that we don't want to tamper with. We want to get on our knees and quote the word of God for God. This is what you have said and it's working. I can tell you, it's working. No divorce and remarriage. Marriage is for life. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody give you different interpretations. People have been asking me, uh, due to one problem or the other, do you think God really meant with this situation that I'm in, do you think God really, is this true? And then they will quote for me other things they have heard from other preachers. I don't listen to other preachers on things like this. And I'm not the one to judge other preachers. But I know what I know. Yes. I know the word of God says that marriage is for life. Yes. In as much as your spouse is still alive. It doesn't matter where he or she is. That is your husband. That is your wife. Well, things can happen and make things look bleak and gloom. Whatever it is, we continue to cry to God. And God is going to deliver. There is no marriage to a non-believer. If you are a child of God, that's a gospel landmark. You want to marry a believer. You want to marry, when young people come to me, I tell them, and I like, because I know everybody all over the world, they are listening to me now. I say this, the Bible did not say you must marry in the apostolic faith church. I will quote the Bible. The Bible says you must marry a Christian. You must marry a believer. Of course, we have admonition. We have advice that if you are in apostolic faith church and you go and marry somebody who is another super wonderful Christian that you think he, she is the one that will take you to heaven because of what you have seen is a fantastic Christian and is in another church. And I don't mean another apostolic faith another church. When you marry, how are you going to resolve that? For some good reason, think about it. So you, somebody came to me not long ago, are you going to leave AF? I will never leave AF. You know, you are already making foundation for trouble. If that boy says, I'm not leaving my church, and you are saying you are not leaving your church, and you are saying God has put you together. I'm not the one to judge my own is to leave you to whatever God has told you to do. That is between you and God. But in my capacity, I will advise you that you are digging hole for trouble already. So I don't want to be misquoted. You, you get my point? But Pastor Isaac, as Zimbabwean called me, but Pastor Isaac said, we don't need to marry in apostolic faith. I, I have a caveat. I explained myself. We actually, we are happy when we are married in our church to each other. That is our joy. We all want to be in the same doctrine, follow the same path, share the same thing, go the same way, and by the grace of God, make heaven together. I don't want to have trouble with them. No, my child must come to my church today. No, let's divide the children. Yes, we go with you. Yours, we go with that. What, what a life. May God deliver us. Be careful of Jezebel and Delilah. Pray well. We are not changing this. It's going to remain the same. That a Christian must marry a Christian. We are not changing our attitude to the world. Because the word of God says that the friend of the world is the enemy of God. 
worldly desires, ambitions, amusement, pastimes to gratify the flesh is never our area of interest. And we are going to stand on that. Worldliness is something we frown at. As God's children, no conformity is what the Bible says. And that has implication. We don't conform. We don't go the same way. We don't agree. We must live above all those kind of things. How about the second coming of Christ? We still believe Jesus is coming back. Yes. How about eternal heaven and eternal hell? We still believe that there is hell yes. and there is heaven. Yes. Somebody put it this way, and I love it. Somebody put it this way. Said Parker's Imna. Oh, well, I remember in the old-fashioned days when some old-fashioned people had some old-fashioned ways. In the old-fashioned meetings, as they tarry there, in the old-fashioned manner, how God answered their prayers, they were singing, much singing, of those old-fashioned ears. Mark it. Mark it. Mark it. Old-fashioned songs. There was power, such power, in those old-fashioned prayers. Old-fashioned prayer, you don't jump, 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 until you jump, until you jump, and then you roll on the floor, and then you, uh-uh. Go on your knees and beg God to have mercy upon your soul. Yeah. And we have mercy upon your soul. Yeah. Uh, when, when Martin Luther wanted to do that by going into penance to do something to herself in order to have the favor of God, God said, no, you can't do that. The just shall live by his faith. Who go down on your knees? You're not by rolling on the floor and jumping from here and this and that. That has got nothing to do. Old-fashioned prayers. Get down on your knees and call upon God. Old-fashioned conviction. Made the sinner pray. And the Lord heard and saved him in the old-fashioned way. Well, they say it is better. Things have changed. Don't you know? And the people in general seem to think it is so. Is that not true? Many people will tell you today, things have changed. Things have moved on. Things have happened this way. And they call me old-fashioned. Let them call you old-fashioned. That old-fashioned will take you to heaven. Yeah. And they call me old-fashioned when I dare to say, may God give you and I the fortification, yeah. the confidence yeah. to say that I like it far better yeah. in the old-fashioned way. Yeah. I advise our young people and I advise everyone if some people that will not comply, if some people that will not conform, they are so bold to do what they want to do. For those of us who want to comply and conform, let us be bold. Let's be bold. Without any apology. If the Lord never changes as the fashions of men, if he always the same, why is old fashioned then? As an old fashioned sinner saved through old, old time grace, Oh, I'm sure he will take me to an old-fashioned place. Old-fashioned meeting in an old-fashioned place. We are old-fashioned people at the end of this camp meeting. May God make you an old-fashioned Christian. Old-fashioned Christian. That people will see you back at work. Is it something has happened to you? Now I am an old-fashioned Christian. And that is where I want to be. When some old-fashioned people come, have some old-fashioned grace, old-fashioned sin, I began to pray, and God heard me and saved me in the old-fashioned way. You know, when we keep the old-fashioned way, the passage that we read, the blessings are innumerable. Yeah. Apart from get, going to heaven, it says that, I will give you rain yeah. in this season. Yeah. Your land shall have, listen to this, your land shall have 360 degree yield. Yeah. That's what it says there. 360 degree yield means that there is no part of that loop of the year when you are lack. When there is a problem that you can point to that one, it was a problem that cannot be resolved. Nothing like that. You will have more than enough when we keep this old fashioned way. And I will give peace. You may be sick. Well, my members know that I am not very well. But I have peace in my soul. Amen. You may be sick, but you are peaceful. Amen. You are peaceful. Because the, that peace comes from heaven. Um, and ye shall chase your enemies. They shall fall before you by the sword. Amen. Five of you shall chase an hundred. Hundred of you shall chase ten thousand to fly. Your enemies shall fall down before you by the sword. 
I will have respect. God of heaven say he's going to have respect. I will have respect unto you. I will make you fruitful. I will multiply you. I will set my tabernacle among you. I will walk among you. I will be your God. Ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God. The Lord is ready. For those who want to cry to God, old-fashioned way, old-fashioned gospel, old-fashioned teaching, old-fashioned things, God, please give it to me. As you come to the altar to pray and cry for this old-fashioned gospel, come and be saved in an old-fashioned way. Come and be sanctified in an old-fashioned way. Come and be baptized in an old-fashioned way. Come and get your experience in an old-fashioned way and you see what will follow that. God bless you as you pray. Father, the King of Kings, we glorify your holy name for this landmark you have given to us. Thank you, mighty Father, because we know you are here. Thank you for the word of life you have fed us with. Mighty Father, we are all on our knees, Father. Jesus, please come down. Oh Lord, please come down. Save souls, sanctify, Lord, baptize. Oh Lord, please heal the sick. Do diverse things for us. Let's go back home rejoicing. Thank you, mighty Father, for we have prayed in Jesus' name.